All right, here we go with our segment. The 2020 election is now just days away. And while we're all looking forward to seeing a new president in the White House, it's important to look down ballot, too, for that's where our future electeds will come from. And also, we need them in local government. Our next guest, Ashanti Kolar, is the president of Emerge, an organization dedicated to recruiting and training Democratic women to run for office. Currently, women, and especially women of color, are underrepresented in elective office. Ms. Golar is committed to changing that. Welcome to the program. I really appreciate you being here today. Excited to be here. Less than a week out. Whew. I'm sweating. Are you? I'm sweating. <laughs> the, the anxiety level is at 10. Not going to lie. Yes. Uh, talk about where we are right now in terms of women's representation uh, and why it's so important to have women in elected leadership positions. If we look at the full picture, there are 520,000 elected offices in this country. That's 520,000 people who get to shape our lives with their pen. Men occupy around 70 to 75% of those offices. Women, we're 51% of the population. We do not occupy 51% of those offices. Even if we look at the record numbers of women that have been running, it still would be around 2085, 2090 until we reach parity. And when we're talking about parity, all we're talking about is 50% men, 50% women. That doesn't mean we're going to have parity across all elected offices. It doesn't mean we're going to have parity in all states. And it most certainly doesn't mean that we're going to have parity for Black, Brown, and Indigenous women, LGBTQ women, women with disabilities. This work really has no end date. At Emerge, despite everything, it's been another exciting year for us. We had almost 800 women who ran for office. Several of them won their races outright. And going into November 3rd, we have almost 672 women who are going to be on the ballot. So it is super exciting to see women continue to step up and run despite COVID, which has been a big step setback for women who wanted to run for office hmm. because they know that our leadership matters. And when we're at the table, we get so much accomplished and we need le women leaders during this time. I'm very excited about what Emerge does because I've been, um, there was, there's another group who I won't name who help women get elected, but they're cool with helping Republicans get elected. <laughs> and I'm like, whack, hey! you know, helping women get elected isn't just gonna, you know, just because they have the parts or they identify as a woman. And if they vote against women's interests, that doesn't seem to help. Your thoughts about that? Getting this question so much, especially I'm sorry. lately. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all, because it is a question we have to ask. And someone asks, why is Emerge partisan? Why don't you just train everyone? And the fact is, our organization represents our values. We are Democrats. We want to see Democratic women in office who are going to believe the same things that we believe and who are going to act upon those values, those beliefs. And we see that it's been women's leadership that has moved us forward, not only in elected office, but I love Frances Perkins. People forget that 40 day work week, all those things that you love, that came to you from the Democratic Secretary of Labor. So it's not only in elected offices, it's in appointed offices too. And people want to say, well, if you're not supporting all women, how does that make you a feminist? I'm still well, a clearly they don't know what that means. <laughs> hey, first, let's talk about that. <laughs> and that doesn't make me not a feminist. It's the women who aren't supporting other women. They're the ones who aren't a feminist. You can still be a woman and want to hold women back. Like that is very clear. Uh, Amy Coney Barrett. We've got that. That's like the yeah, only I mean, answer to this question is. <laughs> exactly. And when I see her, I do not see someone who represents me who actually wants to see my life get better for me to advance. I have a niece at this point. I really vote for her. I want to make sure that she's going to have everything that I was able to have when I grew up. And with the Supreme Court, I don't know if she's going to have those things. And that is absolutely terrifying. So we can either vote for women, appoint women who are going to push us forward, or we can get those women who think, oh, The Handmaid's Tale, that book was lovely. <laughs> you know, why, why don't we try that out? 
I'm so glad to be talking to you today because there much has been made as Amy Coney Barrett's uh, been nominated and been seated. Oh, can't even barely say it uh, has been made about how Republicans, you know, they've been training people since college to do this kind of work, to get on the bench with this kind of ideology. And a lot has been made saying, where are the Democrats? Why aren't the Democrats, uh, you know, training people for the bench and for elected offic officials down ballot? And here you are doing that exact work how come that doesn't get out into the into the you know into the the talk sphere i don't know but that's why i'm on your show so we can talk about it some more <laughs> because the work is happening and i was doing an interview earlier this week and our question was is the tent big enough for conservative women because oh. we still see <laughs> 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 because the fact is we still see more democratic women running for office, getting elected to office. And my response is that's on the Republican party emerge. We wake up every day to do this work, to make sure that democratic women are trained, that they're running, they're winning. If Republicans want this, they have to do the same thing. They can't be mad and say, well, you know, Republican women run, but then democratic women run against them. That's how it's supposed to go, sir. Just because you have a woman running, that doesn't mean that she should free and clear just run unopposed. Are there so, any seated African-American Republican women? In Congress? Not at the moment, no. I wonder in the lower races? There were a lot of Republican women who did run for Congress this year. African-Americans running for uh, on the Republican side? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Interesting. More on that later. What, yeah. <laughs> where, do you, <laughs> where do you get your candidates? Uh, perhaps you uh, are interviewed by a woman and so taken with her that you reach out directly to see if she would be available or interested. My number is 555. No, I'm kidding. But where do you get your candidates? One of the things that makes Emerge so new, unique is we have our national organization, but we also have an affiliate based structure. We're in 27 states and we have an executive director who is on the ground 365 days a year doing this work. And that is important because you need to be out there getting the women who are self selecting saying, look, old dude got to go. He's been in there for 15 years. Nothing's getting done. I want to see change. But then there's also the women who don't see themselves in these positions. So it is calling the woman who's the head of the PTA and telling her it's time for you to be on school board. It's the woman that you see volunteering on everyone else's campaigns and helping them win, telling her, all right, it's time for you to put your name on the ballot. You need to be the candidate who's running and winning. And it's the woman who attends the city council meetings and knows the issues like the back of her hand. We want to move her from that audience to the dais. Mm -hmm. And that is how we not only get a reflective democracy, but we get an inclusive democracy where we have women from all walks of life, backgrounds, religions, races, ethnicities, socioeconomic backgrounds in office. You have to be there saying, all right, if not you, then who? Mm -hmm. Because we think it should be you. And so many of the women in our program when we recruit them, they come, they still have that imposter syndrome saying, am I really going to be the one to do this? Can I run and win? And we remind them, Nancy Pelosi did not wake up Nancy Pelosi. Senator Harris did not wake up Senator Harris. Everyone has to start somewhere. And you don't have to have that family name, that political background, the money to self-fund to be an elected official. Especially now. Especially now, people are voting for those who they relate to, mm. who they feel are really going to do the work for them. And we particularly see on the Democratic side, people are seeing that that's women. And it's why we're seeing our numbers continually increase. Talk about the races we should, should be looking out for this election. What, which races are you watching closely? Well, since we wanted to talk about our conservative women friends, I'm very excited about Sarah Gideon, who is running against Susan Collins in Maine. That is one of the key races we are watching. So we're sending all our good vibes to Sarah. She's the Speaker of the Maine House. She's a great Emerge alum. 
and I love everything about her. How is also, it looking? It's going to be a tight one, but she is doing really well. I We're noticed also, that that uh, that senator tr was like, "Well, I'll be the one Republican who will actually vote against Amy Coney Barrett because now I have to because I've got someone right. nipping on my heels." So even if she doesn't, right. yeah, challenging I, these powerful people are is important even if you don't win because in the moment of the challenge, right, they are more likely to vote in accordance with democratic values if they see that you know someone is progressively about to uh, possibly oust them either this time or next time or you know oh yeah absolutely and with susan collins like okay you voted against amy coney barrett but you still gave us brett kavanaugh and we're never going to forget that no. At all. I don't know. They think we're Republicans where we just watch Fox News and we'll just forget and just switch our idea because someone told us to. Uh, other races yeah. you're watching closely. Very excited about the re-election campaign of Congresswoman Lucy McBath. Mm. She's one of our alums from Georgia 6. If the viewers aren't familiar with her, her son Jordan was shot and killed for playing loud music in his car. She tells everyone, I, I was just, her. she's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> so amazing. She says, I was just a mom, a wife, a flight attendant, and my world got knocked upside down. And she would go to these members of Congress wanting to change the gun laws. And they would tell her, there's nothing we can do to help you. And now she's in Congress and she's doing everything that they told her couldn't be done. So we definitely need to make sure that we keep her in there. We're also very excited about state houses. We know redistricting is going to be key yeah. with who wins this cycle. In Nevada, Nevada became the first female majority state legislature due to emerge alums. We then saw Colorado follow and making sure that we continue to increase women's representation in state houses. We're looking at Janet Diaz, who is running in Pennsylvania. We're looking at Felicia French, who is running in Arizona. We have Dora Drake, who is running in Wisconsin. All fabulous women who are going to help us either in super majorities in state legislatures or work to help Democrats become the majority. Does Emerge continue to support women who are elected post-victory? Absolutely. One of the key things about us is it's a network. The alums actually call it the Emerge Sisterhood. So making sure that we are there for them after. Even with our training program, it's 70 hours over six to seven months because we dive into demystifying running for office and the women, they develop bonds. You will see some of the Emerge Sisters being the campaign manager, the treasurer, they're volunteering, they're a part of the kitchen cabinet. We need to make sure that we're with women along their journey because it's not as if, okay, I've done a training, I'm all set. You need that continued support. But we also know it's one thing to learn how to run for office. It's another thing when you actually get an elected office. It's a whole new world. So making sure that we're there for them when they're elected, but also making sure that we're there for them when it's time to run for higher office. Absolutely. What can we do to support these women in their races before Election Day? If you want to go to our website, EmergeAmerica.org, there's a list of 2020 candidates. You can find all of those women. You can follow Emerge on our social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Emerge America. We're really excited about our new YouTube channel because we have short clips up on things that women need to think about if they're preparing to run for office. And we're also in the middle of our Women Like Me campaign where we're highlighting some of these fabulous women who are on the ballot next week. I'm excited. There's, you know, no one wants no one wants to think about this, but there's an another there's another election and just Two short years from now, a midterm election. I'm assuming there's no rest for you uh, post-election because there's always another one coming up. Always, always. When people are like, oh, it's an off year, I say, I, I don't know what those are. If you have an off year, that's nice. That's cute. <laughs> we don't have them <laughs> at a merge. But we're really excited about the Virginia statewide races. We're going to have an eMERGE alum running in every seat. 
So for governor or lieutenant governor or attorney general, and that is exciting, especially because our alum, Jennifer Carroll Foy, who's currently a delegate in the Virginia House of Delegates, is running for governor. And if she wins, she would be the first woman governor of Virginia, but she would be the first black woman governor in the country because mm. we still have not had a black woman governor. <sighs> So are the, is your program for just young women, like under 40, or can even our program is show up? Our program is for everyone because we need women of all ages running for office. So if you're a registered voter, Democratic woman voter, and these are 18, you can start taking Emerge. We have had alums elected at age 22, 23 because they knew that they were going to run for office. And we've had women women who have come to our program in their 60s and 70s saying, before I leave I'm this ready. earth, mm. I'm going to be in elected office and get things together. This has been fabulous. I really appreciate all the work that you've done, and I appreciate you coming on our program. Ashanti Golar, president of Emerge, the only organization dedicated to recruiting and training Democratic women to run for office. Thank you so much for being with us. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. You are watching ACT TV. I'm Juliana Forlano. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy our series, please share it with your friends. That would help. We're growing. We're a growing channel. And don't forget to go to Emerge's uh, website and their YouTube page and check out those videos. We have a little video here for you that I can play. Give me a quick second and I'll do it. I got to switch my screen share around. But this is... Um, the Women Like Me video that our guest spoke about. So I think it's important to take a little watch, right? Women Like Me. Women Like Me. Women Like Me. We are running for city council. We are running for district attorney. Women Like Me, we're running for mayor. Women like me are running for Congress. We are leading and we are making our community stronger. We are supporting families by making childcare more affordable. Women like me bring transparency, empathy, and respect. We are ending mass incarceration and racial injustice. We fight. We fight. We absolutely fight. Women like me are the future. Women like me, we are the future. Women like me are the future. We're taking our leadership to the next level by running for office ourselves. Learn more about running for office through Emerge. Do it. Sounds awesome. All right. That was fun. Thanks for watching.